Welcome, welcome. How you doing? This is Val Pal Durrell. Welcome to Orchids for Dummies. In today's video, I want to share with you how to fertilize your beautiful Phalaenopsis orchids growing in the method of water culture. But you gotta stay tuned. In today's video, I will not be redundant. I will leave video links to some of the things I've already explained, such as NPK. What is NPK? What is it needed for? I've already explained it. I will leave a video link above as well as a playlist, how to fertilize your orchids at the end of this video. It's going to be very similar to how I fertilize my orchids that are in pots, but with growing in water, okay, it's not gonna be any substrate or media that will be able to provide nutrients consistently to your Phalaenopsis orchids growing in pure rain water or distilled water. Mama does not use the tap, okay? If a girl, girl, if you use tap water, good for you, but here on Orchids for Dummies, okay, what well, we live in a suburban area where the um, water toxicity is very high, very high in salts, very high in calcium, very high, not the good calcium now, and very high in chlorine, okay? Chlorine is going to eliminate, first and foremost, any fertilizers that you use. That is the predominant reason why I choose to use water that is very pure, as well as this synthetic fertilizer is very, very strong. So you don't want to burn your roots and you don't want a salt accumulation, which will happen if you are using tap water, which has a lot of chlorine in it. Those nutrients, just because you mix it into the water, does not mean those nutrients are actually being absorbed by your Phalaenopsis orchid, okay? So just a few care tips to help you along the way. Now, the orchid fertilizer I'm using today is going to be Epsom salt. You can find this anywhere. It provides magnesium. Magnesium helps transport those nutrients to different parts of the leaves, as well as magnesium is one of those nutrients that the Phalaenopsis does not transport from one leaf to another, okay? Nitrogen is the main thing that you need. That's the first number, it's a big number. Nitrogen is the main thing that you would need growing your orchids in the method of water culture because a lot of times you will have um, deficiencies with your orchids. So to prevent all of those deficiencies, we are going to fertilize our orchids. But first thing first, let's clarify what type of Phalaenopsis orchids that we want to fertilize today. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Please like this video, subscribe to the People's Channel, and ring the bell so you will be notified when I post a video, okay? <laughs> so I want to give you examples of Phalaenopsis orchids that I would fertilize okay versus orchids that i would not fertilize with you know nitrogen the way that we're going to do it today so this is a good candidate to receive fertilizer good healthy roots okay no known diseases or ailments okay this baby right here she is in bloom she has leaves okay yes she does but in addition to her having leaves, and even though her leaves are wrinkled and it really looks like she needs fertilizer, first things are first. We want to make sure that she has good roots established, okay? They are growing, okay? When the root tips are just emerging, you don't want to fertilize them because it will burn them and they will die back. And you will lose that beautiful root that this orchid worked so hard to produce. She does not have good roots, okay? So we don't want to fertilize her until she is stable. She is stable. Now, this baby right here, as you can see, she does not have plenty of roots at all. But the roots that she has are viable and they are healthy, okay? No mold, no bacteria, no funguses. So this is a great orchid to fertilize, this seedling Phalaenopsis orchid. 
Now, this is another orchid that is not a good candidate, okay? She's a big mama jama, has good healthy leaves, but look at the roots. She is being um, acclimated to water culture. She fell out of the pot, had root rot, and um, so first things first, I'm getting her acclimated to water culture. Once I start to see new root development, then I would fertilize her. So for the ones that I'm not able to sit in fertilized water, what I'm going to do is use a mist, okay, a fine mist bottle. You saw me with the seaweed extract earlier. This can be used as a foliar feed, okay? This is how I get root production. I will leave a video link how to mix up your foliar spray, okay? So you just wanna goop just like that, okay? And for now, that is gonna be sufficient for them, making sure that we are keeping the water clean, okay? That is how we're gonna get that new root production, keeping the water clean, changing the water out frequently, until the orchid is acclimated into water culture, okay? So stay tuned while we mix up the fertilizer. Now, pal pals, I just released a video yesterday showing you how you can use this as an organic fertilizer for your orchids in water culture, okay? Now, understanding organic fertilizers, that's a whole different video, but I will leave a video link to this as well, so you can do it as an experiment. Always good to experiment. Stay tuned. Welcome on back, baby. Now, before you get confused and say, well, this is not how someone else did it, let me just say that there are different ways to grow your Phalaenopsis orchid, many, many ways. As many channels as there are, there are different ways to grow your Phalaenopsis orchids. There aren't any really wrong or right ways the main thing is stability, choosing one method at a time. So if you choose to do or treat your Phalaenopsis orchids the way that I treat mine, you cannot go to another channel doing what you see them do and um, mixing it all together. It's gonna confuse your orchids and cause them stress, okay? So some of the things that you would need is something big that you can put your orchids in while they sit to be fertilized. Like I said, I use pure rain water, pure rain water. So what I'm going to do is mix these fertilizers into the rain water. Some people, you know, they do it all kinds of ways. I can only tell you what we do here on Orchids for Dummies. Some of these fertilizers that you mix together will actually void the other one out. So the fertilizers that I know how to mix together, and if I could mix them together is what I typically use. Now I use different fertilizers for different seasons. It's now almost spring. So what I want to encourage definitely is growth, okay, EMPK. I want to encourage new roots, okay, as well as new leaves. I really need leaves. So that is why I'm using the magnesium and I'm using the well Balance Fertilizer in general by Better Grow. Stay and Welcome on back, baby. Now, as I told you in a previous video, when it comes to using synthetic fertilizer, a little dab will do you. <laughs> so I like to mix in my Better Grow Fertilizer first, and then I like to put in my Epsom salt, okay? So I'm only going to use a pinch. Let me show you how much of a pinch I'm going to use because your orchids growing in water culture are not used to fertilizer and it also does not have any media to help break it down. So this is like taking a shot versus having a cocktail. So we wanna make sure that it's not too strong, okay? Just a pinch. Okay, just like that. You wanna make sure that whatever fertilizer water that you use for your Phalaenopsis orchids, that is not too dark. Your water should still look like rain water when you're through mixing up your concoction. You wanna make sure that it is, you know, is diluted, not diluted, I'm sorry, that is well absorbed by the water before you add the other fertilizer. You don't wanna add them in at the same time, okay? It's the same as baking a cake. You don't put all of the ingredients in at one time 
you want to um, scramble up the egg before you actually put it into the batter. You don't put the whole egg in there at one time, honey. The cake is not gonna come out. It's not gonna come out right. So that's what we are doing on Orchids for Dummies. We're doing it the easy way, okay? The effective way. Now I'm going to add my Epsom salt. Like I said, just a little bit. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Just a little, a little less than this. Okay, so let's try. Let's shoot for this. I still had a lot on my hands, so it did not get all of it, okay? But it's still just a little bit. And it still was under a tablespoon. You could really use a tablespoon, but like I said, when I'm fertilizing my orchids in water culture, I do it a little bit um, lighter than what I would fertilize my orchids in bark and sphagnum moss. The same way that I do with sphagnum moss. I don't fertilize sphagnum moss as heavy as I do when I um, have orchids in bark. So now I'm gonna place the water inside of the container. Now, when it comes to me, um, choosing the orchids to be fertilized, I want to choose the healthiest of orchids first, as we don't know if the other orchids might have diseases that could be spread um, from plant to another plant. OTDs, what I call them. You don't want your orchids to have no OTDs, honey. Okay, orchid transmitted diseases, honey. We don't do that on orchids for dummies. Stay tuned. Well, while they are being fertilized, I just want to remind you that I do this about once a week, okay? Now, you can choose to do it how often you want to do it, but make sure you're doing it at least once a month. But the more that you're able to feed your plants by this way, the healthier they're going to be growing in the method of water culture. Do not leave your orchids in fertilized water. Honey, I'm telling you what mama knows to be the truth. Do not leave it in fertilized water. It will not turn out well for you for the same reason that I said that cold water will close your pores up. That is going to lead to a salt buildup that will burn and rot your roots off. So make sure that once you get your orchids out of here, especially if you're laying them in there like this, that you sit them in front of a fan to dry off before you put them back, okay? Those are the last care tips that I have to offer. Welcome on back. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Please like this video. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is just get this baby out of here and just place her in this warm water. Do not mix fertilizers in cold water and do not put your orchids in cold water. It should be room temperature, okay? It, with it being room temperature, the orchids are the same way when we take a bath, okay? Cold water closes our pores up. Warm water opens our pores up, you know? So it makes sense. When we use cold water, it closes our pores up. Warm water, it opens our pores up. That's why you're not supposed to take a hot bath and then go outside. The same thing with the Phalaenopsis orchids. I hope that it's making sense. So I'm gonna add a few more orchids and then I'm going to let them sit for 10 minutes. Okay, after 10 minutes, I'm gonna rinse the roots off and then place them back into their container. Okay, and that's easy, breezy, beautiful. Cover girl. Until next time.